It is the 20th of December today and Christmas has come early this year because I've just taken delivery of a brand new FX Impact M3. Now I'll get to uh, what this gun is for in a moment because as you know I already have an M3. Um, but when a new gun arrives, stuff has to be done. You don't just take it out of the box and start shooting with it straight away. There's some basic level of, of um, preparation that has to go into um, setting up a, a new gun. And I don't necessarily mean the tuning side of it because obviously that comes later. But when something arrives, especially something as versatile as an FX Impact, you've got so many different routes you can take to try get to your, your end goal. That's the beauty of the Impact, I guess. It's super versatile. But the downside is that it does require a little bit of input. You don't just get, uh, in this case, a 700 millimeter um, M3 sniper and uh, just take it out and start shooting it. You need to decide things like, you know, are you going to use it to shoot pellets? Are you going to use it to shoot slugs? What weight slugs? Are you happy with the barrel that comes with it? Are you happy with the probe that comes with it? What sort of accessories do you want to fit? There's a lot of things you have to consider. And um, I've got a very specific purpose for this gun. What I mean by that is I've already got an M3. This one over here. Ugh. But as you can see, it is, it is highly modified. This thing is built for the sole purpose of being a long range beast. Um, it's heavy, it's got an 800 millimeter prototype barrel, and not only does this not accurately represent what a stock standard out of the box M3 can do, which is kind of what I'd like to do on this channel as well, um, but because I'm pushing this gun so hard, it also stands the risk of something going wrong. So I'm really pushing this to the limit in order to test new things for FX. The downside is that something can go wrong in the middle of a hunt and then I don't have a backup. So the goal with this gun is to set it up completely differently to this. I'm gonna keep this a lot more standard. I'm going to be fitting a 600 millimeter slug barrel and doing some testing with uh, 30 grain javelin slugs and 26 grain javelin slugs and just trying to see you know what's the right weight for a stock standard impact m3 and a 600 millimeter barrel because we've done a lot of testing with 700 and 800 millimeter barrels but we haven't done that much testing with the m3 and shorter barrels we've done a bit with the, the mark 2 and, and the impact x but not with the m3 so let's put this one down and let's take this one out of the box. Now obviously if you get your your gun, you're gonna to want to go through your manual if it's, if it's the first time owning an impact. Um, you know, take stock of everything, make sure that there's no external damage. Um, this gun is from Patriot Outdoors and Patriot does do leak tests on all their guns before they're sent out. They do minor inspections, they make sure the safety screws out, all of that stuff. But if you just receive your impact, you should probably, um, if it hasn't been done by your, your importer already, you should probably check that for yourself. But I know all of that's done, and I know the Patriot is pretty good at checking that stuff, so I'm going to put that down. Okay, so when it comes to um, doing these initial setups, what do I really mean by that? Well, I want to make this gun my own. I don't want to... I don't want to leave it like it is. Now you can leave it like it is, but I'm so used to certain things being done on my impact, certain um, trigger feels, certain grip feels, um, certain probes that I've got a few basic modifications I want to make. Um, so very first thing I'm going to do is to put a little bipod on. This one's from, I think it's called Modular Evolution, something like that, it's a carbon bipod. And this is basically just to give me a, a good workspace to work with. So there it is. Um, and now when I say make it my own, normally one of the first things I do is adjust the trigger. On all my impacts, I like to have a, a light one stage trigger. And obviously I want that across, same across all my guns. So if I pick up a different model, I can have the exact same feel in it. You know, I know exactly when the trigger's gonna break. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to skip that just because it's a long process and I, I want to kind of um, really take my time and make sure I do it perfectly. But trigger is one of the first things you can do. 
and uh, instructions are in the impact manual if you want to uh, run through that in detail. Um, the other thing I like to do is to switch out the grip. Now, obviously, a lot of people like the standard grip. For me, um, what I don't like is, is the webbing on my hand here. I don't like the fact that there's the seam right here that comes around. Um, and that's obviously just personal preference. Um, but I've got pretty big hands and this grip just feels a little bit small. And because you can't put a sling on the impact, I tend to like to carry it around by the grip at my side. So what I've done is I've, I've got an assortment of different grips that I can sort of choose from. Um, this is a, a Hogue grip, which is very similar to the standard uh, FX grips, but it's got that, that piece at the back for the, the webbing of your hand, which, which I really like. That's one of the options, but this color doesn't really go well with the bronze on the, on the impact. There's this one, which is made by Ergo. Um, this one's really nice, got sort of a rubbery feel, but it's a little bit thin, if you can see there. Um, this is kind of, this is my favorite over here. It's also made by Ergo, but it's, it's this thick one with a bit of a palm swell. And I believe FX actually stocks these, so um, if you want to request this, maybe talk to your FX dealer import and see if they can get this in, but yeah, I just, I personally just like the feel of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's pretty boring, so you can fast forward this part if you don't want to see that. But you basically flip it upside down. Loosen this with an Allen key. Now, these Ergo grips, for some reason, have these little lips on the side here, which we have to cut off. So I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and uh, snip snip that one's off that one's off now we can fit this on there we go that's our new grip fitted and already that feels a lot more like my own impact awesome often I like to change out the butt pad now the butt pad on the impact is, is quite nice already especially the M3 with the new styling and everything but there are so many aftermarket options available for example on my other um, other one I've got one of these made by PR systems and um, this is probably my personal favorite but it is very heavy so for this one I'm trying to keep it light and simple so we're not going to use that it's also like Crawford and Lip makes one. Um, Sabre Tactical makes some awesome stuff, including this bench rest setup where you can basically adjust your your height, um, and you've got these little wheels where you can adjust side to side movement for bench rest. Um, but this won't be a bench gun. So, as I said, we're going to keep this lightweight and simple. Just thought I'd show you that there are many options when it comes to to butt pads. One thing I probably will do eventually is to put the Sabre Tactical bag rider across the bottom. However, I don't have one. <laughs> the one I have is already on my, my Mark II Dabra um, Slugger Edition. I might add it at a later stage, but for now, uh, keeping it simple is the way we're gonna do it. Um, there are also a number of options for Picatinny rail in the front. For example, my uh, Big Boy M3 has a Sabre Tactical Arca and pick rail in the front, which just allows me to bring the the bar pod further forward. It just helps for shooting off the bench or shooting from a supporter position or from a tripod. However, with a 600 millimeter barrel, I actually want the, the bar pod to be a little bit further back. So I'm gonna leave it as is once more. One of the big things is is to, to make the decision for yourself, are you gonna be shooting pellets or slugs? Um, if you wanna be shooting pellets, the M3, You'll see in a moment when I switch the barrels out, but the M3 basically has a probe that you can switch. Um, on one side, it's got a, a transfer port for pellets. On the other side, it's got a transfer port for slugs. Um, it comes as standard setup for pellets, but you can easily switch that around and you can use a slug power kit with a slug probe if you want to shoot slugs. I'm going to be fitting a slug probe because I want to firstly get um, better flow of air uh, through the transfer port and behind the slug to give me the best possible power for a given reg pressure and power setting with that short 600 mil barrel 
I want it to be a sharp burst of, of highly efficient airflow behind that slug so I can get that, that slug up to speed as quickly as possible and close that valve as quickly as possible. And the slug probe goes a long way in doing that. It also gives me seating depth adjustability so I can adjust how far I want this end piece on the probe to stick out and I can seat that slug into the lands, which is what I want. So uh, slug probe, highly recommend getting one of these. Um, it does also have these sleeves that comes with the kit or you can request, which essentially like, for example, if I want to turn this into a 30 cal probe, I can do that. Now it's a 30 cal probe, but obviously this is 22 cal, so we're just going to leave it as is. Um, the power kit does also come with, for example, a weaker valve return spring. This is the standard valve return spring. And essentially that sits in the front of the gun right here. And the valve return spring is responsible for making sure that that valve closes after the hammer's pushed it open. Stronger valve return spring, I have a feeling that this is gonna give me slightly better performance with a 600 millimeter barrel. If this was a 700 or 800, I'd probably go straight for the, the, the weaker valve return spring, which comes with a slug power kit. However, with a short barrel, many people assume that short barrels are, are not as good for accuracy with slugs. That's not true. The barrel design is exactly the same in terms of land dimensions, groove dimensions, twist rate, all of that stuff. The reason people struggle with accuracy is because they're overpowering their gun and the valve is not closing quick enough. And that leaves you with a lot of uh, turbulent air behind your slug, which causes a little bit of instability. So. Stronger valve return spring, I believe, is going to give me better accuracy, but that's what this gun's for, to test. So at a later stage, I will likely switch them out, um, do some tests to see what kind of accuracy do I get throughout the various stages of the, of the power curve. And obviously then I can advise, you know, if someone has a question about a 30 grain or 26 grain or even 23 grain javelin slug in a 600 millimeter barrel, I can then advise what settings are going to be the best. So... That's some information about the slug power kit, but for now, we're gonna leave things as standard. We're only gonna change the probe. There's no downside to using this half flow probe um, when it comes to your power curve. The only question I have is if I'm using very short slugs like a 23 grain, when I seat them forward, do they, do they have any issues with seating? Because sometimes with a slug probe, they can, they can uh, turn over and get jammed somewhere. However, with the, the slug, uh, the slug side of the transfer port has, an, has a, essentially like a, a guard rail at the bottom which stops the slug from falling into the transfer port, which I think is a great design. So I'm expecting this to work very well. But either way, we're gonna put the slug probe in. And I will warn you, for some strange reason, I've brought this up many times with FX, but I haven't really seen too much changes. It might just need a design change, it might just be an assembly change that needs to happen. But the, the little screw at the back here that holds the probe in has a tendency to strip. And particularly if you're using, let's say, a imperial system Allen key instead of metric and, and something slightly wrong, you've got a cheap set of Allen keys which doesn't fit in there perfectly, you can strip very easily. So you're going to want to make sure that you're very, very careful when you're loosening this. Try not to strip it, push it in as hard as you can. Okay, thankfully this one's come loose. But I'm going to take that out and put it somewhere safe. And I'm going to drop the butt pad at the back there, which essentially allows me, allows me to just push out this probe like this. So the probe should drop out. And here you can see the difference between a pellet and slug probe. Pellet probe has that little, uh, it's got that flat section in the front which can engage the pellet skirt on all sides and keep it moving straight. And to be honest, it works great with, with slugs as well. It's just that power loss that, that you have to deal with. Whereas the slug probe, it just, it reduces that, that surface area and just helps your flow of air a little bit better. But both of them work great. So pellet probe, we'll put somewhere safe and we will slide the slug probe in place. Line it up. OK, 
Okay, so there you go. The slug probe is fitted. And at a later stage, I will do the seat, seat, seating depth adjust, adjustment. You can do that while the probe is in. So you can essentially slide an allergy in the back and do that seating depth adjustment after the fact. So for now, we are just going to leave it like that. There is a degree of, of barrel preparation that you can do. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. Obviously, I'm going to be switching barrels out. So straight away, I'm going to loosen the lock screw that holds the barrel in place. I'm going to slide out the 700 millimeter barrel. And you'll see that on one side, we've got the hole for the pellet transfer port. It's marked P. On the other side, we've got the slug transfer port marked S. Now, if we were just using this barrel and you want to shoot slugs, you just turn that around and you'd push it back with the S side facing down so that you get the maximum airflow um, behind that slug. But since we're not using this barrel, I'm going to sit this one down here. And this is the barrel we're going to use. This is a 600 millimeter barrel. It's very old. Um, so this one did not have a slug uh, transfer port. It just had a normal standard port. So what I did was I just bought or got a, a Huma uh, half flow port, which is essentially the same design as what, what FX is using with that like little uh, bar along the middle to stop the slug falling down. And I've, I've put this on here with a bit of Loctite. So that should basically give us the same performance. But this is an old school 600 millimeter barrel. And I'm going to just make sure that this barrel is centered properly because uh, we do have that O-ring system inside. I personally prefer what FX is, is doing now where they've got carbon fiber sleeves which basically fit tight between the liner and the housing and that provides the support that the barrel needs. But, you know, that's something that you can that you can do after the fact to stiffen up your barrel and to support the liner properly. But if there's O-rings in here, I'm going to show you a tip of how you can make sure that everything is centered properly and held in place. So you're going to take your barrel, you're going to put it in a vase like we've got here. We're going to unscrew the shroud. First take off this little carbon sleeve that I got from Ernest Rowe. So shroud is off, but we are going to uh, take a 10 millimeter uh, spanner. We're going to loosen the lock nut at the end. And remove that. And here you're going to see what I've done with this liner. Now I don't have any 600 millimeter carbon sleeves to try and center this barrel like I, like I want it. But what I have done is a helpful little trick that you can, you can also do. Take the liner out. The reason this is so tight in here is that what I've done is I've taken those, those three O-rings that come inside the liner in, and I've essentially wrapped uh, electrical tape around them. Now, you start on one side of the O-ring, you wrap electrical tape around a few times tightly, then you go one rotation over the O-ring. If you go too many rotations, the diameter will become too large and this won't fit into the barrel. You go one rotation over with electrical tape and then you do a few more rotations on the other side. And you repeat this step wherever you want those three O-rings. Um, the reason that, that I'm doing this is, is one, that layer of electrical tape around the O-rings creates a firmer fit in the barrel. So I know that this line is going to be held with a bit more force in, in the middle of that, that housing and it's not going to be able to move. The other thing it does is it evenly spaces these O-rings so that they can't move around. The one thing you don't want when you're shooting is that you go out, you, you shoot a bit and then that O-ring starts shifting slowly inside your housing. Your point of impact is going to shift and it may be that your liner flexes in a certain way that it's not supposed to flex. So keeping these an even distance apart is going to help you with consistency and resistance to point of impact shifts. Um, you, I could easily have put a few more O-rings on here. I've just, I'm happy with the three and I'm keeping them towards the front end of the barrel because that's really where you don't want your liner to flex. This is the critical part of, of the slug's travel. If, some, if anything goes wrong here, that's not the end of the world. 
this is slightly off, it's not the end of the world, but when it gets to the end of the barrel, you want it to be flying straight and you want, it, you want there to be very little harmonic movement. So that's what I've done. And then just to end things off, I've put a bit of grease around them so that they fit into the, the, the housing easily. So that's my 600 millimeter line I'm gonna use. And let's just pop this back in. Nice and firm, and that is not going anywhere. When you tighten down the lock nut on the air, at the end of the barrel, you do not need to overdo it. You only want to make it tight enough that it can't come loose by itself, and that if there are any crazy temperature shifts or anything, um, that, 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 that lock nut's going to maintain the pressure. So for example, if the, if the line at the side is going to shrink from an extreme temperature change, um, you want to kind of maintain that, that pressure on the liner. So we're just going to bring it to where it stops, and then we're just going to nip it down a little bit. You do not need to overdo that, and overdoing it will probably be even worse. But there you go, half flow port. We are going to slide that in facing down. And again, it might help to just grease this, uh, this barrel a bit so that it slides through all those O-rings. The M3 does tend to have much tighter O-rings throughout here, and that was done intentionally just to hold that barrel in place much firmer, which is a good thing. So that's nice and straight. With your barrel in, you can go ahead and just nip it down again, and, and once again, you don't need to overdo this, just tight, and then a little bit more, just to keep it in place. And uh, straight away, I can see a potential issue here. We've got a 580cc bottle and a 600 millimeter barrel. So we're gonna have to just make sure that the shroud extends past the end of this bottle. <laughs> Look at that. That shroud is just barely, barely past the end here. So if I wanted to go ahead and fit my silencer straight away, I probably could. And I think for now, I'll keep it like that. But I've got the option of fitting a 480cc bottle or a little, what's this, a little 300cc bottle as well, if I want to. And I believe there are companies now making like Ulsafe, who are going to send me some bottles to try out soon who are making 300 bar bottles in similar sizes so i'm really keen to try that with the m3's dual reg system those 300 bar bottles are going to be awesome but for now i think i'm going to leave it with ah you know what stuff that let's change the bottle we're going to take off the 580 because we want this to be light right and we're going to put on the 480 now just to mention here i've the, the your old school 480cc bottles for the Mark II will not fit on the M3 because they don't have a large enough diameter valve. This one, I've put a little brass pin around it or brass um, bushing around it, which makes it the right size, but you can't just take, out, take your Mark II bottles and put them on the Mark III. You need a little adapter pin, but you can request this from your dealer and I'm sure they can provide it for you. But there you go, 480cc bottle, I'm gonna fit that in. Okay, um, at this point, you probably want to look at silencers. Now, the impact does come with an FX silencer. Um, they work pretty well. I'm not a massive fan of them just because of the pitch that it makes. I'm, I'm so used to the sort of the, the, the pitch that a, a good aftermarket silencer like a Donny FL or a Huggett makes that, that I, I kind of tend to prefer leaning on one of those. Plus, they look better. So, but also, this particular shroud is one of the old shrouds with the big, I think it's an M20 or something, or M18 thread. So, the FX silencer that came with this gun wouldn't have fitted anyway. Um, so, I've got a couple options here. One, one is just replace the whole shroud. This is a, a Huggett aftermarket shroud, but again, this is the wrong length. I've got the option of putting this... Uh, this Huggett silencer on, which has the right threads, but it's a little bit long for my liking. 
I may, if I decide that it's not quite quiet enough, use this, but I've got a plan C and a plan D. The plan C was is this Tanto, and this is probably my favorite silencer for a 600 mil barrel. It's quiet enough, and it's super short if you look at that. It just uh, really completes the look of this, of this gun and makes it look super cool. Look at that, it's awesome. And then I just thought I'd mention here, this literally arrived with my gun. Uh, it was a gift from Donny FL. It's the new uh, Fatboy 2.0 silencer and looks really nice. Uh, well packaged and what's cool about this is it comes with different air strippers. So when you design a silencer, you want it to be something that is, is custom sized for the particular uh, caliber you're shooting. If, if the hole is too big, you don't get the the full effect of that sound dampening. But at the same time, when you're spending money on a good aftermarket silencer, you want something that you can switch between guns if you really want to. I like that they've included, the, included these air strippers. Um, basically, I would choose the 22 caliber one and I'd fit it in here and you can just tighten it down with a, a, a coin or something. Um, but that that allows you to basically get it as quiet as you, as you can, potentially get it for that specific caliber. The only reason I'm not going to put this on this gun is because, once again, this is half-inch UNF, so it's the wrong threads. But maybe in the future, if I can get a 600 millimeter shroud, again, um, I might fit this on because it's even shorter than the Tanto and probably just as quiet. But once again, I think the Tanto looks fantastic. And uh, it's such a beautiful gun, isn't it? Look at that. If I was fitting a 300 bar bottle, which I'm sure I will in the near future when they become available, I will need to change some of my gauges. This gauge that's on here is a weaker gauge, which is a really nice gauge that works extremely well, but it only goes to 250 bar. Um, FX is producing gauges that go all the way to 300 bar, weaker gauges, and I suspect they will need to soon be putting these on the fill side, the max pressure fill side, and that would basically allow you, if you have a 300 bar bottle, to, to fill it past 250. For now, I'm going to leave this gauge as it is. But I have a 300 bar gauge over here, which I conveniently nabbed from the FX factory when I was there. Because I saw this, time, this moment coming and I knew eventually I'm going to get a 300 bar bottle. Like this crazy 700cc bottle that's on my, my M3. And at that stage, I'm going to need to switch it. Um, I'm also probably going to need to switch this one for my reg one because this only goes to 200 bar and if I decide that I want to put a 300 bar bottle on it kind of opens the door for high reg pressures so if I want to have a reg pressure a second reg pressure my main reg pressure of let's say 170 180 bar which is well within what this gun's capable of then I'll probably want to put my first reg a little bit over 200 bar, let's say 220, 230 bar. In which case, that gauge is going to have to change as well. But in that case, I can take this gauge off and put it on this side. And you know what? You don't really need to see your, your, reg, your reg one pressure anyway, most of the time. You kind of just need to see it for when you set it. And on that point on, it's not even that important. So you could even just plug that one if you really wanted to. And then last thing to mention is... Uh, the reg 2 pressure, this is the wicker gauge on here now on the M3, which is awesome, so you know that's going to work well. But I know FX is starting to put some just very simple digital gauges on their guns as well. So at some point, I might take one of these FX digital gauges or uh, one of the Sekmet digital gauges, which are on my other M3, which is awesome, best digital gauges available, I think, and put it on my reg 2 pressure just so I get that really, really um, uh, secure reading on the, on the reg 2. But as far as adjustment goes, we're not really going to go too far in this video on that. I think uh, when it comes to tuning, you should really check out. I, I did a full video, I'll put it down below, of a, a complete guide to high power tuning for an impact for slugs. It's a very long video. I think it's about an hour, maybe a bit longer than an hour. But you should really check that out. That goes into detail about how to tune your gun. So we doing the pre-tuning stage here. The tuning stage comes afterwards. Um, now obviously one thing is missing here, and that is the scope. And thankfully, I have a Nexus sitting here that's just come off another gun, which I'm not using right now. So it's already pretty much 
um, aligned. Um, I'd obviously re need to re-zero it and everything, but this can be plonked right on here because being a Picatinny rail, the spacing is already quite perfect. So that looks like about the right eye relief right there. I'm going to go slightly further forward. Let's go there. And the nice thing about the Element Aculite mounts is that they can handle really, really high um, torque pressures. Um, I happen to have a torque wrench here that's set at 68 inch pounds, which is basically the maximum for these mounts. So I can just go here, finger tighten them first. And I can just crank these down till they click. And there you go, that's my, that's my scope mounted. Pretty easy job. And what's nice about the Nexus is it's a, it's a pretty light scope, like 700 and something grams. So on top of a, a lightweight 600 mil barrel like this, it's a pretty cool setup. Very happy with this. And I can't wait to go shoot it. In fact, I think I'm going to go out to the farm now <laughs> and start setting it up. But I think that's pretty much it. I don't want to jump into the tuning part, as I mentioned, but you should really check out that video. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, just a quick one. I, I didn't really plan this. It's all off the cuff. But this is what I do when I get a new gun. As you can see, I'm full of excitement. Um, and sometimes you get carried away. You just want to go out and shoot. But it's important that you that you set things up the way that you want them so that when the time comes out to go tune, you don't have to then go back and, and change all these things afterwards. It's all done. You don't have to worry about it. Do the base work first, get your scope mounted properly, um, get everything sorted, decide on what you want to use the gun for so that when the time comes, you can just pick it up and go. So thanks for watching uh, and I will see you guys next time.